Hare Krishna, my name is Tulsi Ananda Das. I was originally born in New Vrindavan, West Virginia, um, to disciples of Srila Prabhupada. So I guess you could say he is my grandfather. Um, and basically, this is my first time in Mayapur and also India period. And Words really can't describe my feelings right now, but I'll do the best that I can. Um, you know, like I said, it's my first time. I walked into the temple my first day here, and I saw Panchatattva, you know, from the outside of the temple walking in, and some deep emotions came to me. You know, I actually I, I cried. You know, I, I teared up and, and I, I became a little shaky, and it kind of scared me a little bit. Um, you know, I've had this Krishna consciousness throughout my whole life been given to me, you know, from my grandfather Prabhupada and my parents, Trinakarta Prabhu and Mother Manindra, who throughout my life always gave me Krishna consciousness but never really forced me to take, always encouraged me to want it for my own, not because they're devotees of Krishna, but they wanted me to understand and realize for myself why, why am I doing what I'm doing. And for many years, you know, I didn't, I didn't take so serious. You know, when you're given something so cheaply, you know, sometimes you take for granted. You know, and I had my bumps throughout my devotional career and life in general, you know, ups and downs, learning things the hard way sometimes. But at this point, being here in Mayapur, I know for sure this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, the, the feelings, the emotions that walking into the temple that I got, and just the gratitude and appreciation. Like, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Prabhupada's dedication to give the world what he gave. And because my parents wouldn't have met. Maybe they would have, but it would be in different circumstances. Definitely wouldn't have been Hare Krishna devotees if Prabhupada has, hadn't came here. And like I said, just the gratitude that I have is amazing. I mean, to see what Prabhupada's vision really was for the world, and especially Mayapur, what he had to do to fight to get the land and everything situated for Mayapur. And of course also hearing Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prediction of looking over and seeing a temple built and seeing all these things, it's amazing, you know. For me, I never really understood until I stepped foot here into Mayapur. And um, it's, it's amazing. I mean, like, like I said, words, it's, it's hard for me to put them in words, but just basically my gratitude, you know, to my parents and Mata, Pita, if you're watching this, please forgive me for all of my offenses that I've committed in my life towards you and others. And I just want you to know that I appreciate 100% everything that you guys have done for me and giving to all of us, my brothers as well. Um, you know, my parents, they always spoke to me about, you know, Krishna consciousness. And like I said, you kind of take it a little bit for granted before you really get to taste yourself and understand what it is. And um, you know, just, just gratitude is there. I mean, I, I just, I really... It's hard to explain. I really can't explain so much. Before, like I was saying, you know, as as given something so easily, like Krishna consciousness, sometimes you take for granted. Um, and as many young devotees, born devotees, I 
I did that, you know. I didn't really take serious. I thought, oh, it was a thing my parents did, you know. And then seeing so many calamities around me, friends passing away, you know, people getting hurt, myself getting hurt, so many different things. I started to ponder, think more. There has to be more to life than just this. What is this, you know? So I started to explore and talk to senior devotees, people from other faiths, and get their idea on these things. And nothing made more sense to me than Krishna consciousness. Not because I was born devotee, but they or we have the answers that people are looking for. You know, why are all these bad things happening to good people? Why are good things happening to bad people? You know, so many things like that. And it really made sense to me, you know, and it filled that emptiness that I was looking for for so long and I started hanging out with once I wanted to take more serious I started hanging out with friends devotee friends that were more serious than I was and those people are still in my life and big big catalyst to me wanting to take spiritual life seriously and um, you know, now, you know, I was praying before, you know, I don't, I don't know what I want. You know, I don't know what I need. Krishna, please help me. And Krishna sent a wonderful person my way, which is my Guru Maharaj. Um, he's definitely helped me out. He's one person that I can always kind of uh, rely on to, to talk to and really understand things, get help with things that I'm going through in my life. Um, and also too, throughout the years, you know, once I got a little bit more serious, Krishna, myself, I'm married now, I have two kids. Krishna has thrown me a wonderful wife and a wonderful family to keep me on track. You know, now I realize this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And now I have my own kids and my own responsibility as a father to guide my kids in the best way possible. So for me, the best way possible is Krishna consciousness, you know, just like how I was raised with Krishna consciousness in the, in the center of our family. My, my parents did have that, you know, we always said, regardless of whatever situation we were in, whether it was living near the temple or not near the temple, we always had Krishna in our house, you know, as far as having an altar, offering our food, offering our boga, making prasad like that. Um, so I want to do the same thing for my children and give them that example, you know, no matter what happened, what, what we went through, that example was always there, you know, that, that Krishna consciousness is the center and should be the center. And, um, yeah, I want to give that to my kids now. And there is growing up, you know, I always remember in New Vrindavan as a kid, you know, before, before we left New Vrindavan, I could remember almost like how you hear the stories in the Krishna book of Krishna and Balaram with his friends in the forest or whatever, you know, feeding each other prasad, you know, my mother made this, but my mother made this, my mother made this. So it was like, it, Kind of like growing up like that in, in New Vrindavan at least was like that for me. You know, we would always be together in one place in the, the compound, taking prasad together, sharing, sharing what we have. And, you know, I can just look back at my life and see so many wonderful things set up for, you know, blocks set up for me right now in my position today. So after everything that I've witnessed, been through in my life, you know, I um, realized life is so short, you know, life is very short and for me, 
Krishna consciousness at this point is the only the only thing that can keep peace in my life. You know, I you know, I, I I don't know, Prabhu. Just I don't know. <laughs>